I'd like to thank Vessi for sponsoring this video. To get $25 off any pair of Vessi shoes, follow the link in the description below or use the coupon code BetsyBegonia. Vessi's decision to sponsor me means a lot to me and you're watching my content and watching these promotions on my channel means a lot to me too. I know a lot of you went shopping for Vessi's last month after you saw my ad and I really hope you enjoy them as much as I do. I've had my Vessi's for three months and I'm not lying when I say that I wear them every single day. They've made rainy season in Lille not only bearable, but like downright enjoyable. Almost every morning I walk one and a half miles to my gym and one and a half miles back afterwards, and if it weren't for these 100% waterproof shoes, I don't think that I would have the same kind of motivation. I wear them everywhere, when I'm running errands, when I just need to like take a walk around the block and get some fresh air, or I slide them on really quickly when the delivery guy comes and rings my bell and I gotta like get out there and greet him really quick. I'm a practical person, I like a sensible shoe, but I don't typically wear sneakers in public. I kind of save them for the gym. But with Vessi, they're waterproof, they keep my feet warm, they're breathable, and they just have kind of like a minimal and sleek design. So I feel like I can pair them with any outfit and I never feel like I'm wearing sneakers, you know what I mean? They're 100% waterproof and snowproof. They're sustainably made and vegan. And I chose to work with Vessi because it's a product that I feel like I can honestly stand behind. I use it every single day of my life. And that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Vessi, for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching my content. Now, let's get on to making some DIY trellises for Hoyas and other climbing plants, shall we? Hello there and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel depending on how long we've known each other. Today I am making DIY Hoya trellises or really trellises for any kind of climbing plant that you might keep indoors. I say Hoya because there was a lot of desire expressed for this video in the comments of my last video which was a Hoya haul and I showed some of my Hoyas that I have already created trellises for and people were like we need to know. The people need to know how do you make those trellises. I have to say this is not a Betsy original. I did not come up with this idea out of thin air. I am not that clever. I stole this idea fair and square from Miro from Basie Plants because he has about a million Hoyas and he makes his own trellises because it's a great way to save money if you don't have the cash for uh, really fancy looking trellises and you can make like a million of them using this, this like rabbit wire fence is what I call it, but it can be called like a million things. So what do you need for this project? Well, first you need the fence. You might see it sold as rabbit wire fence or just coated wire fence. I chose this because it's green and it won't rust. I'll leave a link down below so that you can find it. If you don't wanna use my affiliate link to purchase this product, at least you'll know what the name of it is and how to find it somewhere else if that's what you wanna do. Oh, you know what I forgot to say? You need to find something that is sturdy enough that it's not gonna be flimsy. So this is 1.6 millimeters in diameter and I wouldn't go much smaller than that. The two millimeter wire fence was really expensive. So I bought this and took a little chance, but I would not go smaller than like 1.6 millimeters in diameter. Otherwise, once your Hoya starts to climb or once your plant starts to climb it, it's gonna get like pretty flimsy and it might fall over or bend. I just wanted to throw that out there. You will need a pair of strong wire cutters in order to cut that to create your trellises. I use a pair of needle nose pliers and I will show you why. Basically you'll have like wire sticking out. It's very easy to scratch yourself on that. And you also wanna make sure there are not tiny holes for climbing plants to kind of slide into because then it will be impossible to take them off of that trellis and move them to a bigger trellis in the future. I'll show what I mean up close. So these are very, very handy for that. Well, you don't need this, but this is what I use. It is like a roll of Velcro tape. Now, I found it at the hardware store downtown. It's basically just a roll of Velcro tape. I'm pretty sure multiple brands probably make this and it comes in a variety of colors. So if you wanna spice up your life and you wanna use hot fuchsia pink, you can do that. I use green because, uh, I don't know, obvious reasons, I think. I'm using it on green plants and I don't want it to be very noticeable, but this is absolutely perfect for holding the vines on the trellis. And that's it. Oh, you also need your plants. And you need a bigger pot if you plan on potting your plant up a size. You know, I also have this handy little potting mat. I'll leave a link to that down below as well because this is a true lifesaver when it comes to repotting plants indoors. The first time that you do this, you might not know exactly how much of the wire mesh to cut off. What I mean is that you're not gonna know how big in diameter to make it. With my small Hoyas like this little guy, I figured it out. 
but I, I wasted a little bit of my fence figuring it out the first time that I did it. If you're starting with a fresh roll, you're gonna count the horizontal grid to make sure that you have the length that you want. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And then for this one, I'm gonna need five vertical fence lines. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and we can start cutting. Now before you go and cut the grid, you wanna make sure that one side stops at the vertical line, like this vertical, I don't know what to call this, vertical stake of the fence. You want it to stop at the vertical stake. The other side, you want it to have horizontal wire sticking out. I'll show you. So one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to cut it here. I'm wearing glasses. I can't find my work glasses, like my protective glasses. There will be a point when we're chopping off tiny pieces of wire and it's very important that you wear eye protection because they will just fly through the air and they can and probably will hit you directly in the eye because that's, that's just how the universe works. So please be very careful. Wear eye protection when you're doing that. Um, it's, it's very important that you do not hurt yourself and that it's not my fault that you have hurt yourself, okay? Now I'm gonna start cutting. It's really easy if you have a nice pair of wire cutters. It's no problem at all. You don't have to be strong to cut this stuff. Cut it all the way down through each horizontal grid line to the bottom. Oops, come on, it's hard to line up that last one. Okay, now I have what I'm going to use for my Hoya trellis. And you'll see that one side ends with a vertical grid line and one side has the horizontal prongs sticking out of it. And that's because we're going to wrap these around the other side in order to create the circle. You want one side to just be the vertical stakes, right? So you don't want both ends to be closed. The one that you stick into the pot, you do not want a closed grid. You don't want the plant to have wrapped its roots all the way around the bottom of this trellis. So we're gonna quickly chop those off of the bottom. So we're just gonna choose one side and we're going to chop out the final horizontal grid wires to the other side. You see what I mean? You don't want the bottom to be closed off. You want it to be open like this because you're gonna stick it down into the pot and you don't want your plant to wrap its roots or anything else around that bottom grid line. Start closing it. I usually start with the second one here and it's gonna be kind of difficult. You know, you have to hold the whole thing together. It's not like, it's not in a circular shape yet. And if you start fussing with it and trying to get it into a circular shape, before you've sealed these edges, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be circular, trust me. It's gonna be all wonky and weird. Twist that horizontal grid wire into this corner, like that. And then I wrap it around one time, one full circle, and then I kinda leave it like that. And we're gonna end up chopping this off. I mean, you can keep wrapping it around, but it's not really necessary to put in that extra amount of work. You just don't need that much wire to hold this thing together. And then I skip a grid, because I'm trying to just create the form here. You just do this with every single horizontal line. You wrap it around one full circle, just like that. And then I'm gonna follow through with the rest of them. I just start with every other one because it at least like, oh, see? Sometimes the wire is really crappy and it breaks. Sometimes one of the wires breaks, but I notice that if it's just one in the entire line, it doesn't really make a difference. It's the trellis is still held together and sealed shut pretty well by all the other wires. I've wrapped the wire one time around all of these and I've put it in this position because I find as a right-handed person, this is the best position to put the wire when I'm ready to cut off the excess. Now I like to squeeze it a little bit to make it more circular. Now, I'm just doing a quick and dirty trellis. I'm not hyper worried 
about what this looks like. I mean, nobody is examining my trellises up close and personal, you know what I mean? So from afar, my trellises look nice. They're not super fancy, they're just DIY trellises. It's not really a big concern for me. At the end of the day, my Hoyas look a lot better when they're on trellises, period. So I'm happy about it. Now, this is why I'm wearing glasses, okay? I have all these wires and I have to cut off the excess. That's the next step. So I get these cutters in here and I chop. I have no idea where that went. You see what I mean? They just fly. So I'm gonna cut the next one. And you just wanna go through here and cut all of these wires off. Oops, this is the broken one. I don't think we're gonna be able to salvage it. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. You see, it still has kind of pointy wire sticking out, and that's what the needle nose pliers are for, because it's very easy to scratch yourself or cut yourself on these. And also, if there are gaps, like you can see here, there's kind of some gaps, a climbing plant will absolutely grow through that. And then once it puts out leaves on the other side, you will not be able to save that vine. They really love to get into cracks and crevices. So we try to close these as much as we can. A thicker pair of needle nose pliers would be best, but these are the only ones that I have right now. So there you go. See how I like kind of just squeezed it so that the wire gets wrapped around completely. There we go. Now there's no space and there's no scratchy wire to scrape ourselves on. This is the most time consuming part, I think, right here. I can do this pretty quick because I've already made about 16 of these. But the first few that I made, it took me a while. There are probably other methods for that. But this is my method, all right? <laughs> okay, so now you have a trellis that's sealed shut. And you'll see there are only four vertical grid lines to this trellis, but I had to cut five because two of them weld together, quote unquote, weld together to become one. So I always have to cut one extra. And that's it, like your trellis is done. You've made a trellis, congratulations. It did not take long, did it? No, I fiddle with it a little bit to try to get it more circular. I can never get it perfect. And right now I'm not gonna worry about it because I just need to get this video made so that I can get another video made. Okay, so the next step is repotting the Hoya. Wow, what a great, wow, what a healthy root system. Look at this, look at this. You're going to put the bottom of your trellis into the pot first and make sure that the bottom of the trellis does not have the horizontal grid line. And we're gonna put that in there. You'll see it's a little top heavy. Like it's really easy to tip it over and you're gonna be worried. What I would suggest is getting a nice cover pot. This is a cover pot. It doesn't have a hole in it or anything. Um, and that will weigh it down. And also the potting mix in the Hoya itself will weigh it down so it won't dance around like this. So you got your trellis and your pot. You're gonna put a little bit of mix in there. Do, 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 do. And then you find a place to put your Hoya in. I kind of just, I think my cat farted. Good Lord. Oh my God, where are you? Oh, that could rot wood. Okay, sorry. Slide your little Hoya in, into one side. Decide which side, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I usually don't, I usually try to keep this in the background, so I usually put it on the opposite side of the double grid line. And then once you have it in there, you fill the rest with potting mix. Then I put it in my cover pot so that it doesn't tip all the heck all over the place while I am securing the vines. You kind of have to work with the Hoya here. You'll notice that this vine is already kind of growing in this direction, so that's the direction that I'm going to vine it onto the trellis. I'm not gonna force it in the other direction. And I also do my best to keep the Hoya vines as low as possible because you want it to be able to really fill up this trellis. So you don't wanna just immediately trellis it up the side like this. That's just a huge waste of space. And then your Hoya is already going to outgrow your trellis very, very quickly. So I usually just vine it around. I really love this Velcro tape. And then, to save even more money, you know, you don't need this huge, thick piece. So I just cut it in half. All right, and then I just wrap it around. I just wrap this in soft side inward towards the vine. 
wrap it in a circle, close it in on itself, and there you go. This little Hoya is now secured to the bottom ring of the trellis. You have a trellised Hoya. And it's the same exact thing for bigger Hoyas, but I will show you what a larger Hoya looks like on these trellises. You see how I just like, I wrapped the vines around and around and around. And this was the, the growing tip, but it died off when I was trellising this because the tips are just very, very sensitive. You don't want to touch the grow tips of your plants, especially Hoyas. I don't know about other plants, but Hoyas are very, very finicky. And I'll show you my Carnosa as well. It hasn't grown in a while because when I was retrellising it, I realized I had it in such a freaking tiny pot. I didn't realize that it was in such a tiny pot. So I expect to see a lot of growth on this in the coming year. You see, I just wrapped it around and around and around and around and around and around. And it's got the Velcro strips holding all the vines in place. Sometimes I hold multiple vines in place with one Velcro strip. That's a little peduncle right there. It's first peduncle. This is just such a beautiful Hoya. Anybody who has this Hoya is lucky to have this Hoya. It's gorgeous. This has absolutely nothing to do with this video. I just want to show you because I got it yesterday. Hoya AH074, the uh, silver clone. That's all, I just wanted to show you that. Cause I'm excited about it, excited about it. And that's it, that's all you have to do. It's a really easy and quick project and your Hoyas will love you for it and so will your wallet. And please wear glasses, wear protective eyewear when you do this. Those wires just fly everywhere. They might get into your eye. We don't want you to go blind. You won't be able to look at my beautiful face on YouTube anymore, all right? If you have any other questions, leave them down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see other plant-related content that's not usually in such a big hurry, but today we got a big day in front of us. You can support me on Patreon. The link is down below. I just want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Thanks again to Vessi for sponsoring this video and thank you so much to my wonderfully supportive patrons. My $13 patron, Tina Halberg. My $10 patrons, Jazz and Jamie, Neil, Anthony, Ranking, Frederick, Bowman, and Carolyn Green. My $6 patrons, Grams, Loves Plants, Jennifer Broadfur and Michelle A. My $5 patrons, Vicky Dingler, Darcy Levich, Casey Smirnatopoulos, Tisha McCann, Michelle Sadlowski, James Kopp, Leah A, Fenner Lamb, Haley, Adam Banzoff, Aaron Meow, and Kayla Mann. My $2 patrons, Amin, Karen, Steve A, and Pamela. My $1.50 patron, Kelly Westover. And my $1 patrons, Brianna Phillips, Emily Sepp, Plink Girl, Underscore 50, Astros Bree, Amanda, Ashley, Egal, Lydia, Gracie, Lita, Anastasia, Cassandra Lewis, Sophia, JJ Garibay, Elizabeth Valasquez, Wanyang Zhang, Josie, Nicholas Curtis, Lexi Haynes, Sophia Clark, Linda Thea, Claire Lynn, Elizabeth Mary, and Denise Grimm. Thank you all so much. It really means a lot to me. I'll see you next time.